Welcome to the Expired Podcast by Macy Bookout and Natalie Gard. This week's episode is on Sam Little. Sam Little has more killings than Ted Bundy, the Golden State Killer, and the Zodiac Killer combined. Hey guys, it's Natalie with the Expired Podcast. Of course, I am missing my host, Macy Bookout. She is dealing with some drama, which I will let her explain in next week's episode. So make sure you tune in. If you didn't know, you can actually subscribe to our YouTube channel and get the episode early. So if you like to watch and like see people, see who we're talking about, see the area in which we're talking about, please follow us on YouTube. Subscribe so that you can get early access at Expired Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. Follow us at Expired Podcast. Okay, so I'm really excited about today's case because this case is not only tied to Chattanooga, but it's tied to many different states, okay? This is a serial killer who has more kills than Ted Bundy, the Zodiac Killer, uh, a couple others combined, combined, 93 kills in this case. This is going to be a wild one. Okay, let's just get straight into it. Samuel Little McDowell. He goes by Sam Little. He was born in June of 1940 on the 7th. He was born in Reynolds, Georgia, which is close to here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And his mother and father, Bessie May Little and Paul McDowell were teenagers. Bessie May was 16 and Paul was like 19. They were just very young and they couldn't really take care of their little boy. So after he was born in Georgia, he was sent to live with his paternal grandparents in Lorraine, Ohio. He was mainly brought up by his grandmother. Sam Little was born to teenage parents, Bessie Mae Little and Paul McDowell. Paul was 19 and she was 13. And there are reports that she was a sex worker and a maid at the time and could have possibly given birth to him in jail. So they were not well off parents. So he is eventually moved to live with his paternal grandmother in Lorraine, Ohio. Now at age 13, he was in school and he started getting into the criminal justice system at that time. His first conviction was in 1956 where he was convicted of breaking and entering into property in Omaha, Nebraska. And he was held in an institute for juvenile offenders. So he went to like a school that, that dealt with kids who were in the criminal justice system. Now, in 1960, four years later, he was going to move to Florida where his mother was. And by his own accounts, he began working at various different jobs. He was a cemetery worker. He was an ambulance attendant. And then he began to travel more wildly. Um, different areas, especially across the South and California and you know, it, this stretches from California to Tennessee. This is a wild, wild case. And while he's going along, he meets his longtime partner, Aurelia Jean Dorsey. Um, she was like 30 years older than him. They would shoplift together and then hawk the stuff, um, which put him in jail a lot. And while he was in jail, he, he found a love for boxing, and he actually called himself a prize fighter. He was actually arrested in eight different states for things like driving on the, under the influence, fraud, um, drugs. He was arrested for shoplifting, solicitation, armed robbery, aggravated assault, and rape. And during his time in prison, he took up boxing and he calls calls himself a prize fighter something to know so he's in and out of jail little ends up admitting to more than 93 kills and 60 deaths 
have been formally connected to him by police. They not they may not have been like open and shut cases um, because his crime spanned over three decades. His first official kill did not happen until he was in his 30s, which is wild because normally what we see in serial killers is that, you know, they start early, start young. And Sam Little did not. He didn't start until his 30s, but he has 93 different murders in total. The majority of his victims were sex workers, um, homeless people, maybe people, you know, addicted to a certain substance. And he always killed them by strangulation. I saw a police report and his like fingerprints when they finally took him. Now, I feel like he probably got away with all of this because it he was it was so it, it was so long ago. I mean, he started in 1956. So, I mean, they didn't have the technology like we do. But I did see his fingerprints at one point. His hands were massive. And if you watch any YouTube videos on him, it's wild. He is a big guy. He's a big guy. But he's also super charming and like nice. Oh, it's so weird. It, it's all, it gives me Ted Bundy vibes. Um, but Sam never, well, I won't say never. Sam rarely raped his victims. All he wanted, to, I mean, his, his sexual gratification came from literally strangling. So literally I have pages and pages and pages of his victims and they span across eight different states. Um, th I mean, this is just from what they know. What about the 60 others that they don't know? So <clears throat> in 1981, Anne Lee Stewart, 32 in Cincinnati, Ohio was strangled and uh, Little was convicted of her murder in August of 2019. Mary Jo Payton was 21. She was murdered sometime in 1984 and she lived in Cleveland and Little claimed that he and Payton left a bar together. He took her to like an abandoned factory and choked her until she became expired. Carol Linda Alford was 41, murdered in LA when he lived there for a while. Um, DNA match on her underwear and under her fingers. On July 13th, 1987, her body was discovered and he wasn't found guilty until September 25th of 2014. Can you imagine? And this is what's wild is like, it just seemed to be every case. So, Little's connection to Chattanooga, Tennessee is for 39 years, a family did not know what happened to their loved one. And that is pretty much of all of these victims, all 93. And the other 60 are still probably out there wondering. Guadalupe, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, a Padake. 46, she was found on September 3rd, 1989 in an abandoned auto repair shop in LA. Um, it looks like she was nude from the waist down and had blood um, that consists of a sexual abuse and he wasn't convicted until 2014. Audrey Nelson Everett, she was dumped outside of a nightclub and this was in LA, August 14th, 1989. Um, they couldn't really identify the body at first. She had like road burns and uh, it looked like sexual abuse. And it looks like he wasn't convicted until 2014 as well. Then there's Zaina Marie Jones, she was 30. And this is where he starts moving closer to the East Coast. She was from Memphis, Tennessee. This happened um, on July 6th of 1990. 
Is that right? She was found near the river and it looks like he wasn't convicted until 2022. Wasn't tied to that case. Rose Evans was 32. She was murdered in Cleveland, Ohio around October, August 24th, 1991. Um, Little was offering a car ride home and then the two in an abandoned area uh, were spotted and he also strangled her. Wasn't convicted until August 23rd of 2019. Then there's Denise Christie Brothers, which is a really huge part of this case because um, this, this has been covered before by other crime lovers. And um, I know that two women from the FBI uh, here, they were really a p huge part of this case, but also um, this guy who is uh, a, a Texas Ranger, and he was able to get a, a lot of these confessions uh, initially from Little. So uh, I know he has great ties to Odessa. So on February 2nd, 1994, she was reported missing and um, she had been strangled. Little pled guilty to killing her, receiving his fourth life sentence for it on December 13th, 2018. So he has killings in Homestead, Florida, Miami, Florida, Prince George County, Maryland, Kendall, Florida, New Orleans, Louisiana, Savannah, Georgia, Cincinnati, Ohio, Miami, Florida, Knoxville, Tennessee, Wichita, Texas, East St. Louis, Illinois, Houston, Tennessee, Macon, Georgia, Pagula, Mississippi, Cleveland, Ohio again, Plant City, Florida, Charleston, South Carolina, Dade County, Georgia, Gulfport, Mississippi, Atlanta, uh, I'll see a new one, New Columbus, Ohio, Owenton, Kentucky, West Memphis, Arkansas, San Bernardino, California, Fort Myer, Florida, Tampa, Florida, Savannah, Tons in LA, Monroe, Louisiana, Phoenix, Arizona, <sighs> Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Akron, Ohio, North Little Rock, Arkansas, Las Vegas, Nevada, more from LA, and Phoenix, Arizona. I'm exhausted. I am exhausted. So that is Sam Little. He is a awful person. He died in, I believe, December of 2022. He's no longer on this earth. Um, I mean, what do you think about this? Like, is it because of the times that he was able to get away. I think this is what all true crime lovers are like scratching their head about is like, how, how did this happen? How? I don't know how. I don't know how. I'm just glad he's not on the planet anymore. And what I hate about it is that he was so like charming and nice to women and would say that he loved all of these women. He never had a favorite. Like, he seems likable, but then you like want to fucking hate him because he took so many women away from their children, away from their family, away from everything. And then it was just like, you don't know what happens to them. Oh, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine what all of these people have gone through. And if you watch any of his specials or any videos of him on YouTube, I mean, it's like you love him and hate him all, in, all in, wrapped up in the same feeling, right? I mean, mm. so I believe that his Chattanooga killing, um, So Sam Little's connection to Chattanooga, Tennessee, he was in Chattanooga in the early 1980s. He was at a nightclub here and he met this woman. 
um, her case would go cold for 39 years. It was just recently solved. And I think this is the power of social media and the power of like true crime lovers like us. Um, her name is Pati Patricia. Her name is Patricia Parker. Um, she met Little at a nightclub in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and she was dumped off of 24 in Dade County. That's right across the state line in Georgia. She was ID'd 39 years later. There was this huge thing on the news. Um, they made like a wax of her face and like what her hair was styled as at the time she went missing and put it all over the news and stuff. It was beautiful and it matched her so well. Um, I can't believe it took 39 years, you know? It's, what, I mean, think about that. Think about all the stuff her family and all these victims' families went through. It's just wild. He was very well known in prison um, for his boxing. He got into boxing at a younger age and he, he, in his older age, he dealt with like heart problems and breathing and being able to walk. Um, but he really got into art and it was like he had a photographic memory, like he could draw beautiful pictures of these women and I just I'm so uh, I like to craft I know Macy likes to craft so it's just like oh like could you like oh it's just such a taint to the crafting name but he's such an amazing artist like he's got all these wonderful qualities about him but then he's got all of these awful horrible evil qualities Luckily, he's dead. Like, that's what helps me sleep at night. He's dead and he died in jail. I just, this is such an odd case. And I don't think many people know much about it, you know? And this wasn't just a normal case where we're, we're following one, you know, incident in Tennessee. We're following this guy from east to west coast. Like, oh. Sam Little. And in that coloring book I got Macy, like, I didn't see him. I'm gonna have to go back and check. Because I got two. So, I got a, like a first edition and second edition. Um, and then I got like too many of the first edition. So, I just gave one to Macy for Christmas, I think. But yeah. I don't know. I do have to commend him on telling the truth. Like he knew he was gonna, his health was declining and he knew he needed to tell the truth. And it didn't seem like he was uncomfortable with that. He really loved interviewing, as you can see by all the video, but he really loved peanut M&Ms. Like that's what FBI, the two female FBI agents were like, they wanted to know more about him before they like went to interview him and they found out he really loves peanut M&Ms. So if that's your favorite candy, you share that quality with Sam Little. <sighs> I think it was Ruth. Okay. She was a heavy set, big old yellow gal and had buck teeth. <laughs> had a gap between the teeth everywhere. And she, she was like a uh, honey color skin and she had uh, like her hair was not really long it was how tall do you think she was she was about five seven how much do you think she weighed she weighed about close to, to 200 by 170. 100. pretty pretty big girl but it's right outside of little rock uh, i was about 10 miles from it from north little rock you think 10 miles yeah it was about 10 miles so. okay Hey, tell me about um, Northern Kentucky, the girl that you met in Columbus. So you meet this girl, <clears throat> I guess you're at a strip bar downtown Columbus. I went on my car, and uh, this white girl come out behind the building. You know, I'm in my trunk. She walked over to me, say, uh, come on, can you take me to Miami? 
Describe this girl to me. She white, black, what she look like? She's white, blonde hair, dishwater, dishwater blonde hair, go. It's short. Short, like shoulder length? Yeah, or? Look, no, no, early, a little over the ear length. Like a bob? Yeah, like a bob. Okay, and um, how tall do you think she was? She was about five, seven. How much do you think she weighs? She weighed about 130. She How old do you think she was? Oh, she was about 25. Okay. You mentioned before that, that uh, you said she kind of had like this hippie aura to her. Yeah, she did give you a hippie feeling. I think she was some kind of hippie. Describe the Las Vegas victim. That was in 93. Okay. I bought a uh, El Dorado. What color El Dorado? It was a yellow. Okay. Oh, yellow Cadillac El Dorado. Yep. All right. What year? 78. Okay. Well, tell me about this girl. What does she look like? She was kind of thin, dark skin, about 40 years old. She was out there hustling. I think she was a drug addict because she wouldn't have been out there. How tall was she? She was about 5'5", five, 5'3". Five, five, and how she much do you think she weighed? She weighed about 110, 120. Okay. What about her did you know? The boy came, she left with her son. And she called him over there. And he came over, hey, hey, he shook my hand and everything. Yeah. Now, how old was he? He was about 20 or about 19, 20. Okay, black male or? Black male. Okay. And where were you at when you met her? It was on Owens Avenue. Okay. Owen, that's down in the black section. Owens and Jackson. Where do you eventually take her, her body to? I was, I was headed toward California. Mm -hmm. So as I drove out of Las Vegas, I didn't. I seen a motel and a road leading up to the motel, and I said, there's a lot of bushes and brushes us beside the road before you got to that motel. That's where I dropped, pulled up her body out and rolled it down there, and I heard a secondary roll of noise. That meant she was still rolling. So you basically roll her into a pretty big ditch that's got a bunch of... Well, it wasn't a ditch, it was a slope. Okay. That didn't look like a slope because the vegetable, vegetation had grown up out of the right. slope and looked like you know it was... You, you would think that the road would just be flat. Mm -hmm. But actually the road was going down, mm -hmm. a slope like. And that's why she rolled. So this is a slope right off the road? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about Mary Ann. She's what you nowadays they call a transgender. She's a black male dressed up as a female. Okay. How tall is, is she? Mary Ann's about five, seven, seven, five, six. She weighed about 135. Okay. One, maybe 140. And how old do you think she was? But she was 19. Okay. And where was she from? No, in Miami, down in Liberty City. Okay. And did she, um, you mentioned before she had a boyfriend, or she talked about a boyfriend? Her name Wes. Wes? Yeah, yeah. And tell me about where you met her at. I've seen her down at the Guar on 17th Avenue, and she had on a short cream mini skirt. <clears throat> cream and red. So then this opportunity popped up. Mm -hmm. Take her to the store. Right. She didn't even bring it up back to the apartment. I went down to the seventh seat. That's going down to uh, Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. called the, the Alligator Alley. It, it turns into, it runs in the Alligator Alley. Right. But the further out you get, the further you get out of Miami. Right. And you, you got vegetation in there. Now, how far outside of Miami do you think you were? About, it wasn't too far out of Miami, right okay. there. I was in my stepdad's car, Pontiac Le Mans. Now, where did you take her to? Continue down 27. Mm -hmm. Got back on 27. Going outside of Miami. Okay. Miami. Going away from Miami. Going away from Miami. We okay. got down past the, uh, past the, let's say, limits. So I continued on toward Fort Lauderdale, okay. and I seen a road going off the main road back into vegetation mm -hmm. on the left side. So I got her out of the car, pulled her out, and drug her into the growth 
that bit. Pretty, a light skinned brown, honey colored skin. And she was about a five, she was about tall, she was tall for a woman, mm -hmm. about five, eight, five, nine. And it's a beautiful shape. And uh, she's friendly. And how much do you think she weighed? Uh, she had a beautiful body, a beautiful 150. Well put together. And uh, how old do you think she was? She was about 30. Okay, and she's a black female. Yeah. And tell me where you met her. I met her in, in a, a, a nightclub in New Orleans. Her and her sister was two. She had her two sisters. Her, and the two, her, her youngest sister was having a birthday party. Her sister was dancing with this guy on the floor. And when I come in, she, the girl that I was with offered me to dance with me. And while we were dancing, she says, uh, you, want, you want to go riding after this, you know, after this party's over? We walked outside and she looked and seen my car at Lincoln. She said, ooh, you know, that's a beautiful car too. So she had an arm in arm, walking to the car, we got in, stopped at the gas station. We were on the Highway 10 and uh, going toward Slidell, and I seen the sign say Miller Woods. Mm -hmm. So I cut off, I took off the exit, went, and that sure enough was the road leading into the woods. <laughs> and we went in and parked. So we finally got to where we were going, and it was by, uh, by a river, a little water thing, and the big, uh, they had a machine out there in that little river. Dredging. Dredging. Okay. I grabbed it by the legs and pulled it to the water. Mm -hmm. That's the only one that I ever killed by job. And that was your intent. That was my intent. Sam Little ultimately confessed to 93 murders from 1970 to 2005. That's more than Ted Bundy, the Zodiac Killer, and the Golden State Killer combined. Did you ever shoot any of these girls? Shoot? Yeah. With a gun? <laughs> I get no kick out of shit. All right. So everything was done by manual strangulation. Did you ever use like a, a belt or a cloth or no anything? No garrets and all that. No, no ligatures at all? My hands. Just your hands? And without that, I wouldn't want to do it. Let's see. Mississippi. Yes. I mean, you think that? Oh, boy. I got a fire and a gun for it. I got a bunch of three in Jackson. Sam Little's connection to Chattanooga, Tennessee 
he was in Chattanooga in the early 1980s. He was at a nightclub here and he met this woman. Um, her case would go cold for 39 years. It was just recently solved. And I think this is the power of social media and the power of like true crime lovers like us. Um, her name is Pat Patricia. Her name is Patricia Parker. Um, she met Little at a nightclub in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and she was dumped off of 24 in Dade County. That's right across the state line in Georgia. She was ID'd 39 years later. There was this huge thing on the news. Um, they made like a wax of her face and like what her hair was styled as at the time she went missing and put it all over the news and stuff. It was beautiful and it matched her so well. Um, I can't believe it took 39 years, you know? It's, what, I mean, think about that. Think about all the stuff her family and all these victims' families went through. It's just wild. So, I think that's it for this week's episode of the Expired Podcast. Hopefully, Macy will be back next week. But if not, we will always have an episode for you out every Monday. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get, you know, early access to the episode. But also, like, pictures and more information about the people we're talking about. And also, follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook at The Expired Podcast. Thank you.